Hi everybody. I wasn't very happy with the first attempt at the progress bar I built last week, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a better progress bar that I built. So you can tell me what you think. I think this works a little better. Actually, it actually does work. The other one didn't work is why I got rid of it, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll just show you my updated progress bar. I'm going to run the sample, which is part of datajuggler.blazer.components on GitHub, and I'll link to that in the, in the description. I'm not going to show you how to set up Blazor Styled in this video, but I will link to Blazor Style because they've got good documentation on his site there, his project. And I'll go ahead and get started. And here I will just show you my new and improved progress bar. And a few options you have here, you know, obviously you can tell it's no longer, the last one was kind of like futuristic and didn't look very good and it definitely didn't work very well when you got in a real project or at least a real sample project. One thing you can do if you don't like the background, you can turn off the background. It's on my to-do list to add a background color, if you know, but I haven't done that yet. But for now, you can have kind of like the Model T when it first came out. My grandfather told me you could have any color you wanted provided it was black. So same option here. And something else that's kind of neat with the background scale is you can set it to point you know if you want to make it a little bit smaller or if you want to make it you know ginormous for some reason if you have a really big ui you're trying to fill up but for i'll put it back to default and you can also change the scale of the bubbles is what i called them for it's just the inner little balls or and we'll make it a if you wanted to make it real small for some reason or if you wanted to make it real big you could do that but we'll put it back to about 0.6 and the next thing I'll show you and the last thing I'll show you for this is these squares. If you don't like the circles, you have an option now for squares. So that's all I'm going to show you for this, but I will show you one, excuse me, one real world sample, uh, or at least a real uh, sample project. And I'll zip over here to my little blazer image gallery that I'm building. It's taken me a little longer than I thought, but I built a progress bar in the meantime. All right. And first I'm going to show you my login and I'll just log in as one of these users. We'll just choose her. Let's see if that's the right password. Okay, so now that's the login. That's pretty fast. The sign up takes a little bit longer, and I'll go ahead and show you that. And that is just going to be. I'll call this guy. Oh, we'll go with. Uh, oh, we'll go with Rose. I'm trying to think of a name I haven't used. Yeah. I could type. All right, and I'll pick an image. She looks like a rose, and I've already used her, but I only made so many images. And we'll sign up. So let's see how long it takes. Okay, not too bad. All right, so that's the demo of the progress bar. I'll go ahead and show you a couple of things about it that changed. I'll go over to my progress bar sample. I still left the subscriber, excuse me, the subscriber equals this for the setting the parent. But after I built a couple of components, I got tired of having to build an interface for each component. So I decided it would be better if I built a kind of generic components, you know, interface system. So this wouldn't have to be a little easier to work with. Or it's, it's getting better right now. It's still got a little bit of manual work. But for now, I will show you this blog post I wrote a couple of days ago. And I'll just, I thought I had it open, but sorry. And I will link to this in the description also. But basically, I created an interface called iBlazer Component and iBlazer Component Parent. So in like in this example here, I'll, uh, I have my index page and then that has a login component. And the login component contains a child component of a signup control. And the sign up component, after the user logs in, I needed a way to tell the index page, hey, I've got a user. So that's why I created this little, you know, I called it iBlazer. Like the sign up component is an iBlazer component, but the login component is both. It's an iBlazer component and an iBlazer component parent. And then the index page is just an iBlazer component parent. I have an issue in with Blazor team, I want to know if there's a way to even, I would like to get even page to page communication like this, but that's a whole nother story. But I'll go back to my little blog, I'll close a little. And then uh, as you go down a little bit with our interfaces here, both of the iBlazor component and the parent component interface have a received data. You can send a message and a message is just basically, it's got a text property and a 
a, a, I called it a name parameter, but a, and that has a value and a name. So you can send a bunch of data to and for, you know, to and between your child and your parents. And the way it works that I like is so neat is just like the progress bar. You just set the parent. So as long as the, like in this case, it's the login control has a sign up component. So it just, it, it be, says parent equals this. And on the setter for the parent on the sign up component, it just calls registers the first thing it does when it gets this value. It says, oh, I need to tell the parent, hey, I'm here. And then the, the register method on the login component says, oh, I'm expecting you the sign up the sign up component so it stores it here so from that point on the sign up component can talk to the login control and the login component can, can talk to the sign up and it works the same way between the index page and the login component so i think it's pretty neat and it's a neat way of you know you can send data it's parameters are nice but a lot of times you already have an object in memory or if it's a complex data you don't have to load it again but you know it takes time or that's trips to the server you don't need to make so that's all I'm going to show for that. I'll link to this in the description if you want to meet, read more about this. The next thing I'm going to just show is how I ran the calls to log in in a background thread. That's what I was trying to do because the, the issue I was having with the first progress bar is making the animation stay smooth while the computer's busy trying to log the user in because I have this one thing where I create a password hash and it takes longer than I wish it did about three seconds and the computer gets kind of you know unresponsive a server might be a little better at handling it than my machine but I will go ahead and show you briefly how that code works and let me go over to the login component sorry I'm in the wrong project and here let me go to uh, login model if I can find it wherever I had that okay that's not it let me find the where i start the login okay go to start hang on this is it though sorry one second there we go so here i just create my little thread to call my process login method but with the way the thread starter works you can only pass in one instance of an object you know one parameter so i created a login model object to store the email address the password and the stored password hash might exist if the user had previously stored their password you know with the checkbox of remember password which that's also something kind of neat. i'm gonna make another video about that i'm using this microsoft dot protected browser storage it's in preview right now but it works really well so i'll probably make a video about that soon but that's all i wanted to show but i i kind of like the uh you know here's like where i send the message and i'll show you briefly in the receive data on the index page and that'll be the last thing i show you before i i'm sure you're tired of listening to me talk okay here's the receive data and here i've got a couple of things like here if i get artist logged in then i get the I make sure my message does have parameters and then i look for my parameter name says artist and i say great that's the i get my login response and that's going to be the parameter dot value is the login response because you can it's just an object and then here I just take my login complete and that's where I actually um, notify the user interface. Well, actually I just set a property that says like here's login. So I'm on the index page. So yeah, so login here, this is just, I, you know, update my messages and then I call refresh here. And the only thing you have to remember here, this has to be invoked async because a lot of times you're calling this from a thread that's not the dispatcher thread and I got that error more times than I care to but so that's just how the refresh method works but that's a pretty neat way to get blazer parent child communication and sorry I've had a couple of beers and I'm a little tired so I'm sorry if I'm kind of babbling all right well have a great evening and thanks for watching